Surprise! It's Remember the Flowers again. <clears throat> so... Funny story. I had already recorded today, and I was already like in the middle of editing, and then all of a sudden I saw um the, the tweet that, oh, Remember the Flowers, you know, it's finally up on Itch, the update. It's like, oh, yay. I get to record again today. <laughs> but anyways, um, let's remember the flowers, and I like remember the flowers. Plus, I'm excited for Axel. If you recall, the white saber-toothed tiger with the black sclera eyes and the squinty eyes. Oh, but that's right. You guys haven't actually seen his sprite yet, have you? Or maybe you have if you were already Patreons or whatever. Or you, you already downloaded this update and you couldn't even bother to wait for me to, you know, upload the video on Monday, which is today, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anywho, um, so yeah. Uh, in the previous episode, oh so long ago, um, Cooper, aka Lance, turned out to be basically selling the human, Cyrus, to, I guess, the company. Uh, I forgot, what is it called? Resume? Yeah, um, that basically, I guess, um, uh, experiments on humans or something? I don't know. And that was a big shock and revelation for a lot of people because, you know, this dumb, stinky wolf, you know, turns out to be the bad guy. Or is he? Because, you know, he's still on the cover. Obviously, he's, uh, uh, he's a morally questionable character who I'm assuming he's gonna show up again I mean come on it's he's in the cover <laughs> um so yeah Let, let's see what happens huh a growing headache eventually wakes me up again I'm not sure what time it is but I must have been out for at least an hour or so I groan on my throbbing skull it's difficult to stay asleep like this. It's gonna be fine. I think this is a terrible idea. I'm facing the wall, but I can hear a pair of people sitting right behind me, less than a few feet away. You really want him to join us, of all people? Well, it wasn't my idea, it was the boss's. Why does she want him to stay? He's been around for a long time. He could have some useful information. Then let's interrogate him before relocating him. Shh. He's trying to sleep. Ar Axel. This is a bad idea. I'm not so sure about that. This wouldn't be the first time. You're way too sentimental. Xavier is long gone. He's not going to know about him. This isn't about Xavier. But if he happens to know something, I'd like to hear about it. I can hear the dragon grumble right behind me. Where's he going to stay? He can stay in my room while we clear out the storeroom. You're really going to let him live with us? I don't see why not. Come on, you love the last recruit. That causes the dragon to stumble. That's... different. Just relax. I'll take care of him. You don't have to do anything. Hmm. <clears throat> Whatever. Just give him a chance, alright? No promises. I can hear the tiger sigh. Let's follow his... Uh, Cyrus's example and get some rest. Whatever you say, boss. Atta boy. I can practically hear the dragon scowl from here. What a lively bunch. I can't help but wonder what the hell they're going to do with me. I love Axel. Sleeping in a moving vehicle has never been something I was good at. I'm pretty sure I slept better on the train than here. Although I guess that was moving too. I don't know. I'm too tired and confused to make sense to myself right now. The constant chatter behind me seems to have stopped. It's pretty quiet other than the running of the car, and even then, it's just a low hum. 
the thoughts bouncing around in my head are loud enough to drown it out. Something catches my attention, however. The flipping of a page. Guess someone's awake after all. As much as I don't want to interact with anyone right now, I can't really lay like this all day. I try to steal myself. I'm not going to let anyone else influence me. With a deep breath and a loud grunt, I push myself up. Chapter 6. Another Beginning I rub my eyes and heave a long yawn. Oh, good morning. The tiger grabs my attention. He dog ears the old book he's holding. I hope you slept well. How are you feeling? I find myself glaring at him. Eventually, I push myself up to sit more comfortably. The sun seems to just be coming up. There's enough light for me to see the tiger in front of me and the sleeping dragon next to him. He's snoring. Could have been better. I'm fine though. I respond curtly, trying to give him the hint that I don't want to talk right now. He doesn't seem to get it. He's acting way too friendly. That's good. Most people don't take multiple blows to the head very well. Although, I guess you're not most people. Wouldn't know. Hmm? I lost my memory. He's taken aback by how nonchalant I am about that. Oh, uh... I'm sorry. You don't recognize me then? No. He frowns a bit before trying to smile. The tiger's eager to keep a conversation. I don't really listen. I'm suddenly reminded of the days where I'd call a cab. More often than not, the driver wouldn't take the hint that I just wanted some quiet. Eventually, he snags my attention. Hey, are you sure you're okay? Hmm. Alright. Uh, when we make a pit stop, we'll look at those injuries. Sounds good. He scratches his cheek. I, uh, do you want to talk? Not really, no. Well, I guess that's a bad way of putting it. Do you have any questions? I sniff and shrug in response. He sighs. I, well, look, I can't really... He pauses as if contemplating. Sorry, I just want to help. That's nice of you. I'll be fine. I'm being stubborn just to hold some semblance of power. Even though I have a billion questions running through my head. Well, we can at least introduce ourselves. You already know my name. He grimaces. Uh, well, yes, but it's more for formality's sake. I sigh. I guess I'm not going to be able to avoid him. Alright, I'm Cyrus Cantwell. The tiger coughs. Oh, uh, you can call me Axel. That's not your real name, is it? Again, he seems taken aback by my bluntness. I don't want to mess around anymore. I... well, no it's not. I can't tell you that right now. How come? It's a... Uh... Don't say classified. I tense up. Hey, hey! Uh, sorry, I'm not trying to upset you or anything. I try to release my tension with a long, drawn-out breath. I'm not exactly in a good mood. I can't say I'm surprised. Look, I really do want to help. I can't tell you who I'm working for or much about who I am with. But I can answer pretty much anything else. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I pinch the bridge of my nose. I think I'm getting a headache. Alright, here's a question. Can you stop talking to me? Axel deflates a bit at that. He nods before grabbing his book and picking up where he left off. Good. I don't want to deal with anyone right now. I lean back into the seat and stare out the window. 
eventually I do start to feel guilty. It's really not like me to snap at someone like that, no matter the mood I'm in. Even so, I need to be careful with what I say from now on. Anything I say or do could be used against me in the court of law. I guess I have to get used to the fact that I might not be able to trust anyone again. Wonder how long that will last. I cross my arms and tap my finger on my elbow. I manage to keep my breathing steady, but I can't deny that I'm anxious as hell right now. It's time to weigh my options. Realistically, how long can the silent treatment last? Total silence won't do anyone any good. But I also have to be careful with what I say. I'll probably go insane from the mental gymnastics. Regardless, I'll survive. With an exhale, I turn towards the tiger. What are you reading? His ears perk up before he turns to face me. Oh, it's called From the Stars. Have you heard of it? Uh-oh. Casual conversation time. No, I haven't. To be honest, I'm just surprised that you're reading a book at all. Yeah, they're pretty rare nowadays. I only have a few. This is probably my fourth time rereading this one. I can tell. It looks pretty old. Well, it is probably around a century old. Huh. Who's the author? Alyssa Schneider, I think. He tries to look at the spine, but it's pretty faded. My friend was the one who found it. I don't know much about her. Same, never heard of her. I thought you said you lost your memory. Here comes the hard part. Most of it, it's fragmented. I see. So, uh, Cyrus? I want to be honest with you. He closes his book again and sets it down on his lap. When I asked if you recognized me, it's because we were the ones who got you out of Resume. I figured. Your voice sounds pretty familiar. You leaving me in that alley is one of my earlier memories. Well, at least from when I woke up here. When you woke up here? Uh, how much do you know? I'm far away from home, and I want to get back. I see. What? It's... That's something we can talk about when we get back to our base. We have a doctor we want you to see. They can probably help. With? Axel's about to reply, but he's interrupted by the yawning dragon next to him. Oh, good morning, Ring. Hope you slept well. He sits himself up to stretch and then groans. I'd probably have slept longer if he weren't yapping too. Then he opens his eyes and he zeroes in on me. Oh, right. You haven't been blabbing to him, have you? No, we were just talking. About? It takes every ounce of my being to not say that stick up your ass. I was curious about the book he was reading. I wasn't talking to you. Axel, are we really bringing him? Yes, Ring, that's been established. I'm going to make a call when we stop. Be my guest. The dragon pulls up his bulky axiom and grumbles as he works on it. What? He snaps at me. I guess I was staring at him. Even so, I roll my eyes and look away. I can't wait to run away from him in particular. Axel gives a loud sigh. Ring, you could stand to be a bit more hospitable. You could stand to use better judgment. I don't know how many times I have to tell you. This wasn't my idea. You didn't even try to negotiate with her. Why are you so against this? We don't need anyone else to weigh us down. It's hard enough to keep track of everyone as it is. Ugh, I really don't like being talked about as if I'm not even there. Look, I'm with the dragon on this. I don't really want to be here either. They both look at me with a bit of shock. Then the dragon's face curls into a smile. 
C. He wants to leave too. That's... Not up to me, is it? Ring snickers. At least he catches on fast. Look, when we get back home... The dragon starts groaning again. Ring, stop it. You're acting like a child. Whatever. He scoffs before working on his axiom again. Peachy guy. As I was saying, when we get back home, we'll be able to explain everything to you. I can try to explain some stuff, but we do have to be discreet while we're out and about. Okay, I'll bite. Discreet from who? From the people who kept you captive. We're both surprised the dragon's the one who answered. Yeah, what he said. We're not out of the woods yet. They could still find us even if we're in the in vehicle. In fact, our next pit stop will need to do some, um, extractions. Well, it's kind of refreshing to get some information for once. Assuming that it's reliable. What's this in vehicle? That doesn't sound like a word. It's not. It's what we call the vehicle we're in. He gestures over to the dragon who's not paying attention again. He souped it up so that it can be invisible. Hence, in vehicle. I see. Lame, right? And don't be giving away my invention so easily. I thought it was cool. It is kind of silly. But I stopped myself from snorting. What is resume? I can see the dragon turn his eyes towards Axel expectingly. It's... A facility that... They harvest people and their organs. I blink. Hey, come on, don't be so blunt. He already knows of this, right? I don't know why he's asking. He lost his memory. The dragon goes wide-eyed at that, like he's genuinely surprised. It's getting harder to keep my composure. Please stop talking as if I'm not here, it's irritating. Again, they look at me. I shrug and sigh. Sorry, Cyrus. I don't remember much, just bits and pieces. What do you remember? I hold my head and shake it. It's a lot. Although, I doubt I have any useful information to give them. Let's see. Before that, I have some more questions. Shoot! When you say... They can find us, I presume you're referring to the people from Razum? Indeed, they've been looking for you for a while. You were in one of their high security facilities. It's not hyperbole to say that you're extremely valuable to them. How come? Well, it's your blood and genetics. It's kind of hard for me to explain, that's why I want our doctor to tell you. They know more about it than anyone. I can't help but pull my sleeves up to examine the numerous scars along my arms. I see. When I look up, they're both stunned. What? The dragon coughs before trying to wave it off. The tiger keeps staring. Wow, I'm sorry. I didn't realize how far they'd gone. Well, I guess losing my memory wasn't the worst thing to happen. Maybe. Well, uh, speaking of, we could potentially bring your memories back. Oh yeah? Yeah, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. We even know the cause of it, but we were careless and didn't handle the operation well. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. We did what we could, and no one got hurt. He's still looking at his axiom, but holding his teammate's shoulder with the other hand. Thanks, Ring, but we did screw up. Cyrus, I don't know what you've been through in the past week, but it's our fault for not being more careful. For that, I'm sorry. Even while still sitting, he bows down in repentance. It's honestly kind of awkward. I still don't know what he's talking about. Uh, it's alright. Like I said, I don't know what happened. I don't have any ill will towards you for anything. 
You probably could. Because of us, you're stuck here. The dragon chuckles to himself as if it's funny. I think you, specifically, are kind of a dick. Oh yeah? The dragon slides off his axiom to lean closer to me, but Axel stops him. Hey, seriously, that's enough. Alright, alright. I wasn't actually going to do anything. Not like he could feel it if I tried. All of a sudden, I remember the gun in my pocket. And how I'd like to exude some level of power for a change. On the one hand, I should keep that hidden as a last resort. Although, it wouldn't do me too much good. I'm pretty sure Cooper didn't unlock it. I mean, ugh. You okay? The tiger snaps me out of my momentary stupor. Just thinking. Next question. Do you know someone named Lance? Their reactions are some of the most surprising I've seen. I can hear the dragon quietly gasp before going bug-eyed. The tiger looks incredibly conflicted. I... Hey, how do you know that piece of trash? He's growling. I'm not sure if it's directed at me or the aforementioned piece of trash. I keep my cool. Glad I'm getting better at that. He's the one who found me when I woke up. Although, he went by Cooper. Ring looks at the visibly shaken tiger. Hey, Axel. No, it's fine. I want to hear about it. I assume y'all have some history together. What makes you say that? The dragon snaps at me. Well, your attitude for one thing. He told me a bit about you, though. Oh, I'm sure he did. Ring. Let him speak. I want to hear. The tiger takes a deep breath to regain his composure. Please, Cyrus, go on. I want to know what you've experienced this past week. Hmm. Eh, what do I have to lose? This gives me an excuse to talk shit about that asshole. Even so, do you promise to be as honest as you can be? I do. I don't. I'm not going to let him get away with any of our secrets. Then, it's a good thing that I wasn't talking to you, is it? The dragon looks pretty mad while Axel is trying to hold back laughter. Okay, okay. Obviously, I can't let you know sensitive information that doesn't have to do with you. But if it does, I'll use my authority as the leader to make it okay. How's that? Fine by me. Where do I begin? I recount all of my experiences I had with the yellow wolf. Axel is listening intensely with a plethora of facial expressions. Even the dragon seems invested in the overall story. Oh yeah, obviously I know you had all shared history. I'd like to know about that too, if possible. Axel grimaces and Ring looks at him with worry. I can handle that part. Well, color me surprised. Seems like he's not completely terrible. Alright, just know that he hates you all pretty much. Figured. He's clenching his fist in his lap. Probably not a good idea to provoke the giant tiger in a closed space. I'll let it go for now and continue with my story. Admittedly, I'm a bit winded after recalling everything. Didn't realize how much really happened over the course of one week. Ring looks like he's contemplating something. Same with Axel. Maybe they're just going to tell me that it's a common experience for folks around here. I hope not. That'd be fucked up. Eventually, I decide it's up to me to break the silence. So, yeah, that's it. At least as far as I can remember. Well, Ring? I'm thinking. Give me a second. Ring pulls out his axiom and starts fiddling away with it. I look towards Axel, and he holds up his hand out to signal for me to wait. It doesn't take Ring long to finish. Alright, I guess he can stay for a little while. That's a lot of 
decently incriminating evidence. Definitely not enough to put a dent in our workload, but if we can't get his memories back... That's what I was trying to tell you. Axel states in a I told you so tone. I still don't think it's a good idea. But I can't deny that that's a lot of useful information. That is, if we can prove it's true. How will you do that? We can try to probe you. I pause. No thanks. I wasn't being serious. He let out a dry laugh. Could have fooled me. Like we said, we know a specialist who can try to help you. You have more in common with them than us. Uh, we'll let them handle most of the nitty gritty details. I sigh. That's something at least. Not as much as I'd want. But what can I do? Alright, at least we're getting somewhere. This is a refreshing change of pace. Sounds like Lance kept you in the dark. He didn't even tell me my own name. Ring whistles. Damn, that sounds like him though. Speaking of, I told you what I know. What can you tell me about Lance? Is that even his real name? Oh, yeah. He had you call him Cooper, huh? He's running out of names from what I can tell. You're not the first one to say that to me. Not surprised. But yes, Lance is his real name. Lance Krager. I only knew him for about a year or so, but he was part of our group since its inception. What is your group exactly? Ring and Axel look at each other. Ring shrugs, giving the floor to Axel. About seven years ago, we started out as a band of thieves. Most of us had split off over the years for one reason or another. Myself, Rose, Lance were some of the founding members. From what I've heard, it was a pretty wild time. That's putting it lightly. It's a lot to go over, but as for Lance... He's quick to tense up again. Ring steps in just like before. So, today our group is more of a mercenary deal. We don't really go around fucking shit up for no reason. He pauses. Usually. I can't help but snort. Damn it, I need to keep my guard up. I guess after telling them my week's story, I'm feeling more open. I need to reel it back in. We offer all kinds of services now, if it pays well enough. In fact, bringing you all the way out here was another job of ours. Great. Sorry about that. We'll try to make you as comfortable as possible. Although we can't exactly let you out of our sight for the time being. I narrow my eyes and lean back in my chair. Define time being. Pretty much forever. Don't get me wrong, I don't really want you here either. You're not exactly subtle about it. Thank you. Anyway, our current job is to keep you safe for the foreseeable future. Unless you want to go back to resume. Can't say I do. Am I going to be under, like, house arrest? Maybe if some agents are spotted around town. Although most folks we live around don't care for resume either. Oh, that's surprising. How come? I thought they were doing a lot of good for people. So do most people. Those who know the truth tend to stay away nowadays. How many people know? Not many. Another one of our current jobs is to try to accumulate as much information as we can to show the world how bad they are. Even so, it's possible that people won't really care. They lead the medical field by doing inhuman things, but those inhuman things have saved thousands of lives. Wouldn't be surprised if you saved a few hundred yourself. Ring. Sorry, that was in bad taste. Wouldn't know. I don't know what you're talking about. We'll fix that, whether you like it or not. Great. Ring, stop antagonizing him. I'm just saying. If you're going to have him live with us, he needs to pull some weight. He doesn't have to do anything. He's been through a lot as it is. 
again, forgetting I'm here. I sigh loudly. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not in the best mood. I'll try to keep that in mind. I'll make sure Green does the same. I stare at him for a moment. Thanks. He seems okay so far. He'd have been a pretty good actor if he's faking his friendly disposition. Looking back, I don't think Lance was acting. Just a lot of half-truths. If I wasn't so naive, I would have seen this coming from a mile away. I'll need to keep that in mind the next time I'm about to get sold off. Can we keep talking about Lance? I really want to know more about him. Axel tenses up again. Ring is about to speak, but Axel interjects. What do you want to know? Axel... It's fine. He gives a reassuring smile to Ring. I want him to trust us, even if it means talking about the past. Ring looks apprehensive for a moment before relaxing back in his chair. Floor's all yours, boss. Thank you. So, Cyrus, what about Lance do you want to know? Knowing that he's a touchy subject almost makes me second guess what I want to ask. But I have to know what he's really like. Why did you kick him out of your group? Axel rubs the back of his head. Straight to the point, huh? Well, it's a long story. Take your time, I'm in no rush. Let's see. To cut to the point, he sold one of our crewmates off. I blink, but I can't say I'm surprised. I guess that's a common thing for the bastard. Seriously? He was a human named Xavier. We were all pretty close, but one day he went missing. We gave up looking for him after six months. It eventually came out that Lance sold him to the very people he handed you off to. I gripped my thigh tightly. Is this guy for real? Xavier was... Uh, pretty special to us. He was an unparalleled beacon of optimism. As you can imagine, when we found out what Lance did, we wanted nothing to do with him. I still think we should have killed him. Ring interjects while wearing a sour expression. Sometimes I think you might be right. If it makes you feel any better, he's always scraping the bottom of the barrel for a decent meal. Even that's too good for him. I still remember that day. I hadn't gotten that mad in a long while. We were on a mission when he let it slip. He was so excited to announce a big payout for a job he had been working on. Rose smashed his muzzle pretty hard. She beat me to it. I hadn't seen her so angry before either. I gulp. What was the job? He said he got 600,000 plums for the job. It took nearly half a year to get it all. But when he did, he couldn't help but jump into my arms. When I asked him how he got such a large sum of money, he froze. You could tell he tried to prepare a sound and reasonable explanation as to why he sold one of our best friends. The fucker tried his best to make sure that we wouldn't get mad. Suffice it to say, we were mad. I don't blame you. Sorry, I know it's a touchy subject, but I have to know. Why did he sell Xavier? Was it just for the money? Axel takes a deep breath before letting out a long sigh. He was a lot like you. You both carry a very precious resource. Your blood. I furrow my brows. My... Our blood? Yes. Both you and Xavier are known as pristine carriers. Your blood and biology is extremely valuable to the facilities in Resume. I hold my head for a moment. I feel like I'm about to remember something. Like a distant memory of someone drilling into my back. What do they use it for? You know how there's almost like a universal blood type amongst humans. Well, there's even humans whose blood and organs can be transplanted into any species. I'm starting to feel clammy. My stomach is empty, but I can feel warm saliva pulling in my mouth as if I'm about to throw up. Indeed. 
there aren't a lot of people like that across any species. Maybe three or four dozen. Okay. And what about... What do they do there? Cyrus, I think we could use a break. This isn't an easy thing to talk about for any of us. Wait, no. I'm okay. Fuck me. I'm already showing my weak side. Sorry. I want to know more, please. Axel looks at Ring for a moment. Ring shrugs again. Don't look at me. You said you'd be the one to take care of him. I guess I did. Sorry, Cyrus. What else do you want to know? Can... Can you tell me more about Resume? Well, I can assume that you can infer what they do there. I gulp. Do they use us pristine carriers as, like, farms? In layman's terms, yes. I roll up my sleeves to look at my scars on my arms again. Do I really want to know what happened to me? Who was I? We want to let our doctor fill you in on most of the details. They have experience with treating cases like yours. There are more like me? Thanks to us. Every chance we get, we try to bust someone out of that hellhole. How has that been going? In the past five years, we've only been able to help six people escape. Including me? Including you. I don't know how we managed it. We almost didn't. You were our hardest one yet. Why's that? You're someone who had some of the best synchronization rate with other people. Uh, huh? Your blood, organs, and bones were compatible with almost every person they put them in. Because of that, you were locked away. Much more so than other carriers. Oh. That's uh, the gist of it. Are you okay? Uh, no, not really. Mainly because I'm finding it hard to believe all of that. But that would explain my scars. You're taking it rather well. I've been told I have a good poker face. Once. I don't know what to make of all of this. It's a lot. That's understandable. Just know that if you need to work something out, we can help you. That's somewhat comforting. Although I need to be smart. Thanks, but no offense. I don't really trust you. Not yet, anyway. Axel looks a bit hurt. Ring looks indifferent. That's understandable. I'm not going to try to push you. You've been through a lot. I just hope that you can let us help you when you need it. I appreciate it. I think I just need some time. Well, you have plenty of it, Rumi. Oh, right. I'm living with you guys now, huh? Yep, that's not negotiable, but like I said, we'll accommodate you to the best of our abilities. I see. Well, it's not like I could really do anything about it. It would be best if you cooperate with us. We're not going to hurt you. Well, I might if you get on my nerves. Again, I'd like to see you try to hurt me. That a fact? Guys. Axel tries to get us to stop this childish quibble. You started it. Hmm. Anyway, is there anything specific you want when we get back? We have to clear out one of the rooms, but we can try to accommodate your needs. Uh, hmm. I never really thought about it. I don't know what kind of stuff y'all really have. I can do something small for starters. Money's not really a problem. Hey, don't use our funds on him. I'm using mine, don't you worry. You're so easy, man. I'm just trying to be a good host. Axel crosses his arms with pride and lets out a breath through his nose. Come on, there must be something you miss. Food, drinks, pastimes, you know, stuff like that. Uh... I mean, I used to play the piano a lot. But it's been so long, I'm worried I wouldn't be very good at it. Oh, I think I know. 
How about a bath, like a tub? Talk about old-fashioned. Fitting. Hey, I like baths too. I have one you can use. Then we can work on getting you one. That'll be great. I can't remember the last time I've taken a bath. Ring raises a brow at that. Axel continues. We'll have our doctor show you how to cover the ports on your back. They're water resistant, but it's still a good idea. You know about those two? Yes, sadly. I'm not sure if I want to know what they're used for. I wouldn't either. But we do have some conditions. We need to learn as much about Resume from you as we can, no matter what. Why? So we can expose those freaks to the world and beyond. And that's why you want my help? Indeed. We also want to help you recuperate from all they've done to you. I'm told you can't feel pain, is that right? Yeah. They did that to you. They treated your nerves for a long time in order to be more efficient at, for the lack of better term, harvesting from you. I shudder again. I can almost feel scalpels cutting my skin and muscles apart so someone can pick at my bones. I... see. I think I could use that break now, sorry. Of course, it's nothing to apologize for. Hey boss? There's a voice coming from the ceiling. Must be an intercom. Hey Rose, what's up? We're coming across our first pit stop. We'll probably need to stay overnight. Understood. Axel turns towards me. Do you want to get some fresh air soon? That'll be pretty nice to be honest. Just try not to run. Wouldn't dream of it. Ring growls as he gets into a glaring contest. Axel sighs. Glad to see you two are getting along. Ring and I let out a joint. Oh hell no. We get into a childish argument while Axel looks on chuckling to himself. In the back of my head, I can't help but wonder if I'm happy to find someone new to spat with. After we both cooled down, Axel and I got to chatting. While Ring kept to himself while working on his axiom, he started telling me about what he does while not on the, any jobs. You can really run your own bar? Sure do. Well, I try to. I usually have a manager to keep tabs on the place while I'm away. But I can make a mean cocktail. Huh. I wasn't a huge drinker back home, but I liked a Long Island iced teas. Oh, what's in it? Oh shit, what is in it? I try to think back as much as I can, but all I can recall is just a mishmash of a bunch of stuff. Uh... Everything? It's a lot of liqueur of different types. I see. Maybe I can try to make you one sometime? Maybe. I doubt you'll have the right stuff. We had to go to a specific bar in town just to get anything good. Why's that? Our college had a lot of bars, but only a few were any good. We liked the gay bar the most. Oh yeah? Oh god, those eyes. <laughs> He's raising his brow suggestively. I don't know why I'm giggling. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy there, tiger. Whoa, deja vu. Sounds like I'm talking to Damien. None the wiser, Axel chuckles. Sorry, heh. <laughs> Do go on. Huh? Oh. What? Just, uh, missing home. I'm still not sure how I'll get back. Axel opens his eyes. Oh, you're trying to go back? Well, yeah, I miss everyone. I see. I'm not sure if there's anything we can do about that. It seems to be getting more and more impossible each day. Ring coughs. Well, we might not have drinks like that. But we got some shit that will knock you out for a month. Uh... That doesn't sound very fun. You get used to it. In our line of work, we need it from time to time. Do you like what you do? Ring doesn't respond and focuses on his axiom again. Prick. 
what about you? Do you like what you do? Mm, it has its perks. We live comfortably, but we do some pretty serious stuff to put food on the table sometimes. Such as? Uh, well... He sighs. We have been hired as hitmen before. Oh. He's so casual about it. That's kind of freaky. Reminds me to stay on my guard again. I see. Whatever gets the bread, I guess. What about bread? It's an expression. Whatever gets you paid, basically. Ah, well, we usually ship one guy out to do those jobs. Hey, don't talk about him behind his back. I wasn't. I was telling Cyrus what he does. Well, don't. His privacy is more important than anyone else's, and you know that. I know, but he's not going to be able to avoid Cyrus forever. Hmm. Let him introduce himself. If he lasts that long. What? We're not going to do anything to him. You're not, but... He gives a weird grin, trying to be over the top with his joke. Axel flexes his ear, which makes Ring wince. Stop it. Okay, okay. You're no fun. This isn't supposed to be fun. Those were your words, remember? I don't recall. Rose interrupts over the loudspeaker. Okay, guys, we're here. Thank fuck. Ready to get some fresh air, Cyrus? Sure. I gaze out the window. It looks pretty desolate. Probably wouldn't be a good idea to run away now. I turn back to Axel. He's got an optimistic grin on his face. I sigh. What's the worst that could happen? What was that? Nothing. Nothing. The vehicle comes to a rolling stop. When Axel and Ring get up, I follow suit. Oh wow, they're tall. I'm six feet tall, and I'm pretty sure Axel is about a foot taller than me. Ring is probably a couple of inches taller than me. Yeah, I think it would be in my best interest to just play along. Everything okay? Axel looks down to me, still smiling. Huh? Oh, I just didn't realize you were so big. He's tall, huh? So are you, Ring? Hmm. I think he's sulking. Does he have a height complex or something? Thankfully, I stopped myself from snorting. You are pretty tall. I didn't know many tigers, but one I was pretty close to was just a little shorter than Ring. Dragons are supposed to be taller. Oh wow, yep, that's a complex. I don't really want to get into that right now. Wait, how long are we going to stay here again? Probably for the night. We'll get up early and should be able to make it back by lunchtime tomorrow. I see. Now that I think about it, I'm getting kind of hungry. The last meal I had was breakfast yesterday with... I grimace. The dumb part of me wants to try to be petty and not take a random person's food again. Thankfully, the smart part of me pushes to ask for something to eat. Hey, sorry, but do you all have any food? I haven't eaten since yesterday morning. Axel opens his eyes in shock. It's not for very long. I can't help but wonder why he keeps them shut. Oh, uh, of course. We packed a lot for the trip. I have dibs on the dumplings. No, no. We have guests, Ring. The dragon groans loudly before staring bullets into me. Those are mine. I gulp. Those are his. Axel sighs again. Cyrus, you can have some. Ring. We have plenty. I'm watching you. Please don't. All right, all right. Move along, you two. Axel gets behind us and starts to push us out of the in vehicle. What am I going to do with you two? You started it. No, I fucking didn't. The bickering persists until we meet with Rose outside. I'm nearly blinded by how intense the sun is. Oh god, it is blinding.
And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, yeah, so... Ah, it's finally nice to have a Remember the Flowers update. It's one of my favorite visual novels, so it was nice to see the... the notification, even though I was in the middle of editing another video. And I basically had to stop and then record this one, and then now I have to edit it. And the video ends up being like almost two hours, so right now I'm just cutting it in half. So you can expect the second part on Wednesday. So yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, we got to meet, formally now, um, Axel and Ring. Axel's, I'm assuming, a saber tooth tiger, who for some reason keeps his eyes closed. But he has those dreamy, <laughs> black, uh, black sclera and yellow iris eyes, who remind me of someone I know. He, <laughs> he, um, he knows who I'm talking about. He knows I'm talking about him. Um... Yeah, and, and although Ring is a bit abrasive, you can tell that he's just, you know, doing that as a front. So I'm looking forward to seeing him eventually, you know, open up a little bit to Cyrus at least. Hopefully. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I'm also curious about that other person that they were talking about, but I'm assuming we're going to find that out eventually. Also, uh, Rose, who I'm, I'm assuming is the one that's driving right now. She should be the hyena. But I guess we're gonna be introduced, you know, to her in the next part. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Mm, it's... It's kind of nice that we're gonna eventually get a bit more backstory on Lance slash Cooper. But um, it's gonna, I guess it's gonna be like little bit, you know, little by little because they're not gonna obviously spill the beans all the way yet. Hmm. But it was a little heartbreaking that, you know, Lance did end up being the one that was, you know, selling us. And that this hasn't been the first time that he's done it. And that he ended up doing it to the other human that was part of the group. So that was kind of messed up. Uh, but I guess you do what you do for the money. Although, it seems like that they actually needed the money. But... I guess... I guess it just wasn't worth it. Like, yes, I understand that you you did it for the money to help, but, you know, uh, we'd rather you would not have done that. But, but I guess, you know, we'll eventually find that out. We'll find more about that, you know, later. Um, what else? I guess that's it for now. But I obviously can't reveal what happens in the next part of the update, you know. Either you have to read it yourself, or you just have to wait until Wednesday and see, you know, the rest. So, with that out of the way, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Remember the Flowers yourself, you can find it over on Itch. The official Remember the Flowers Twitter page will have a direct link to it. And also the Patreon. And if you would like to support the project, then you can subscribe to the Patreon, which will give you early access to builds that will be a month before I get access to it, so you can, you know, figure out what happens before I do. And I think it's $10 in order to get, like, the early builds. And, well, I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.